And we all kind of got to eat as much ice cream as we wanted. So yeah. it was kind of a dangerous summer, <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. Hey guys, welcome back to Why Wait. I'm Chris. I'm Megan. And in case you don't know, our channel is all about full-time RV living, getting out there and starting your adventure. Uh, why waiting? Doing whatever you can to make the life happen, right? Why wait to travel? That's right. And uh, get to do all these fun things that we're doing today, like uh, take out the trash, taking the trash, walking the trash down to the dumpster. So, are you full-time RVers and campers? Know that's that's part of the life here. <laughs> so I think today we wanted to talk to you about Seven and Ranch. Seven and Ranch. Spent our summer, our majority of it anyway. Yeah, that's out in Idaho. And we do a few campground reviews. We like to only do campground reviews on the ones that we've stayed at for an extended amount of time, the ones that we stay at for four, five, six months. And we spent this past summer out in Idaho, and it was called the Seven and Ranch. Ryrie, Idaho. Ryrie, Idaho. So we chose Seven and Ranch out in Idaho mainly because we wanted a centralized location to hit up the national parks. And we went to Grand Teton and Yellowstone. Now, it's not exactly the closest campground to either one of those. I'd say what? It came Maybe. down to how convenient it was to both of them. Yeah, it was and kind of split in the middle. And cost was the main and, thing and cost, for yeah. amount of Time that we were going to be there yeah we were staying out there for five six months at a time and you know the campgrounds out that way can be really expensive but I, this was what what was this listed at we got to about 400 a month it was well it was 475 but then um during that time they had gotten up a little bit which was still reasonable i think it was 525 which is a great rate especially for that location out by those parks and everything for me while i do this okay time to dump the trash yeah location was a location and price was a big factor for us and i'd say it was about a two hour drive to get to each park mm -hmm. from there which isn't too bad because again it's not like we were just going to go one day and that was it when we're staying out there for an extended period of time we made numerous visits out there so it's not like we had to go to the park felt like we had to get everything done in that one day. We knew we were gonna go back uh, plenty of times, so we didn't really mind the drive. And that's not the only thing out there. I mean, there was, there was more than we thought. <laughs> yeah, there was so much to do within a two hour radius of that campground. So we, yeah, we definitely stayed busy. Yeah, and the campground itself was great. I mean, they had all the amenities that you need, obviously, you know, laundry and bathhouses. Yeah, full hookups, um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, full hookups. And they also had some fun things. They had a driving range. <laughs> yeah, they had, had a nice a little... driving range. So this is the driving range here at the campground, which is just awesome. Come out here and you can just hit golf balls and they have a, a green over there for chipping and putting. Goes out to about 250 yards and uh, just real nice area. They had a putt-putt golf course. Yeah, a real nice putt-putt golf course. I mean, some of the, you know, miniature golf courses at some of these campgrounds are kind of a little run down, a little hokey. This one, this one was actually beautiful, really nice. They got this great little mini golf that goes through the shade. For a campground, it's really nice. We really enjoy coming out here and playing. Corbin's always out here and you can just see they got it landscaped really, really nice. There's a creek that runs through it. And so we just come out here and play mini golf all the time. There's actually a golf course across the way too. Then as well as we got the driving range. It's just a real fun mini course. It goes up top, it goes under there. And speaking of the driving range that they had, right across the street, there's a nine hole golf course, which is in unbelievable condition. And it's like $11 to go play. So if you're a golfer, it's a big bonus to stay at that campground. Yeah. There's another campground right next door to a touch in it called, uh, was it Heisey? Heisey mm -hmm. Hot Springs or Heisey Campground? 
the high heat, yeah. And they do have a pool and they have natural hot springs. They had zip lines that you could go down. Um, so there's a lot of activities right there. There's a nice pizza parlor um, that you can just walk to. Great pizza, yeah, great food. So there's a lot to do. And even in the wintertime, they have like- They have a tubing, tubing right? hill. Yeah. yeah. Which in the wintertime is tubing and in the summertime is, was, is bike trails. Yeah, bike trails, like from advanced to just basics. So if you're into BMX or, you know, mountain biking, I mean, it had jumps, all kind of stuff. So that was cool too, I thought. Yeah. Oh, well, at 7 in they also had a little ice cream shop. Um, mm -hmm. I actually ended up working there over the summer. They needed some extra help, so. Yeah, she, that was I was her, down with that. That was kind of our first work camping experience. Yeah. Was us working there. Shoop, <laughs> over somebody's head there. Yeah. See him back there. See him back there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so kind of, we all kind of got to eat as much ice cream as we wanted. So yeah. it's kind of a dangerous summer, <laughs> but it was good. And the owner, the owners, uh, just, just wonderful people. They're so real down to earth. Um, it's one of those campgrounds where there's not a whole list of rules when you check in. If you want a place that's a little bit more, not so much like RV resort feeling, a little bit more of a, a campground feel, you know, dark, nice skies at night, campfires, not a lot of rules, but, but it was well kept up and yep. uh, it was a great place. Very great. Yeah. Yeah, you Urban liked it? loved it, so. Yeah, yeah he was so out there. all the ice cream, he get, got to play mini golf for free. <laughs> yeah, he became a mini golf expert and an ice cream eating expert. And a, let's see, lizard catching <laughs> expert, a snake <laughs> catching expert. Definitely. All that good stuff. No, and right down the road from the campground um, were lots of trails, maybe a mile. And you there's can boat launch. Biking. The Snake River yeah, runs it's, right along the edge. It's of the right on the famous Snake River. So if you are into trout fishing, this is another bonus for you. Couldn't be a better location. They also have a boat launch right around the corner. Just a beautiful setting for that. The campground itself, it's kind of spread out. Um, they've had that property for years and years. And used to just be the farm, right? Have, yeah, it yeah. used to be a cattle farm. And they've, they started the campground and then they would add a little by little by little they have lots and lots of land yeah. so Campground's it was kind of spread out a little very spread out with different odd. sections the section we were in was very new the brand new section yeah but a lot a lot of the sections were very established and they have year-round camping there so even though it gets really cold and really snowy there uh if that's something very limited sites for the oh was it year round okay okay I mean, not too many people want to stay there year round anyways so yeah. a little cold yeah but um there were definitely some there are pull through sites Mostly back in sites. Um, they have primitive tent camping. Yep, pavilions to rent out. Yep. A nice barn that they do weddings and events. stuff in yes, and so events. It was and busy all the time. So it was. Yeah, place. a very popular place. Cabins. cabins they do yeah. have some cabins. They actually have, uh, used to also be a ranger station. So they've converted the buildings from the ranger station into cabins, I guess, to stay in. So those were always popular with people yep speaking of snow we experienced our first <laughs> snow there we were supposed to be leaving in september but we ended up staying till october since she was working there they asked her to work a little bit later we were hoping to get out before the snow came but we were like a week late too. yeah a week late but it was cool we had to kind of winter prep and do that kind of stuff but it was yeah, a good learning experience the snow. yeah yep yeah corbin had fun in the snow in idaho and eating the snow. Yes, not yes, the yellow don't snow. Don't eat the yellow snow, right? <laughs> yeah. But again, um, if you're heading out west, you're looking for something with a long-term stay, with a great feel, close to parks, um, close to so much to do. There is so much fishing in that area and so much hiking. Um, state parks, national parks, it just, just, man, it's an adventure, outdoor adventures paradise out there. It was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful... The campground had amazing views. Yep. And um, really close to um, well, Kelly Canyon was just a few miles down the road. Snake River was right there, like we said. Yeah, we didn't get to do everything we wanted to do. We we spent the whole summer in that area, and we still into fall, and we still just there was so many places we still didn't get a chance to go see. If you're looking for it, no frills. You know, it's not fancy. It doesn't have a fancy pool or you know. Yeah, it's not a resort kind of RV resort feel, but it's more of a private land kind of feel that someone's got a huge giant farm and 
it, it like turned into a campground, part, part of the family. You get to know the owners. And you really do. Great. And they're great people. They're willing to do anything for you and help you out. And uh, yeah, we just really enjoyed it. And it's definitely a place that we'll probably end up back in yep. when we go back out that way again. And I'll probably end up working there again. Yeah. Because they've been trying to, they were trying to get me to come back. <laughs> but they were good people. Definitely. That sounds like something you're looking for. It's called Seven Inn Ranch. It's in Ryrie, Idaho. About 30 minutes outside of Idaho Falls. Yeah. Which was nice too. So while you feel like you're out in the middle of the nowhere in the country, uh, 30 minutes and you're right in a major city that has airport and actually a beautiful city with a nice feel to it. Um, yeah. Waterfall that goes through the city. And there's a lot to do there too. So. Yeah, but there's plenty to do around the area. You, you're not going to get bored. No, <laughs> not by any means. If you feel like you want to head out to Idaho and be in a great location, check it out. It's called Seven Inn Ranch. And say hi to the owners, George and Tennessee. Yeah, us. tell them why Wade sent you. <laughs> you might not know that there. They might not know, <laughs> and yeah. And Lewis is Chris and Megan. That's <laughs> and Corbin. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, appreciate you stopping by, checking out the video. As always, get out there, start your full-time adventure, because... Why wait? Why wait? That's right. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.